All right, so I'm going to jump right in here to example two. So we're simplifying cosine x tangent x minus sine x cosine squared x. So we, in the first video, simplified example one and discussed some things to try. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to change everything to be in terms of sine and cosine. So I already have cosine of x. I can say tangent x becomes sine x over cosine x minus sine of x cosine squared x. Well, the next thing I notice is that I have this common factor of cosine of x, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel those out. So when I cancel those out, I'm going to be left with sine of x minus sine x cosine squared x. So the next thing I notice is that both of these terms, this first term and this second term, have a common factor. They both contain a sine. So I'm going to go ahead and try factoring that sine x out, which is going to leave me with 1 minus cosine squared x. As I saw in the last example, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Therefore, sine squared x equals 1 subtract cosine squared x. And again, I know to look for that because I see a 1 and I see a trig function being squared. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to replace 1 minus cosine squared x with a sine squared x, giving me sine x times sine squared x. Well, sine x times sine squared x is sine cubed x, which again is going to be my simplified answer, much simpler than this original expression I was given. Moving on to example three. There are four examples total, if I haven't said that already. And in example three, I see I have secant of x times one minus sine squared x. So I have two different routes I could maybe possibly take here. Um, one thing I could notice is I could change this to be in terms of sine and cosine, specifically in terms of cosine. I also notice I could try distributing this in, but what, what I notice more than any of those two things or above those two things is I may be able to replace this binomial with a single monomial trig expression, which typically if I can have less, that's usually simpler. So I notice again that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1 so rearranging this in a slightly different way, subtracting sine squared x this time, I see that 1 minus sine squared x is the same thing as just cosine squared x. So I can replace this here with cosine squared x, giving me secant of x times cosine squared x. Well, now if I change secant to be in terms of sines and cosines, again, specifically in terms of cosine, I notice that I can reduce, since it's multiplication here, I can reduce by a cosine. When a cosine cancels out, I'm left with cosine x. Again, much simpler than this original expression I was dealing with. So let's look at one final example where we're again going to go ahead and try to get a simpler problem. This is probably the most difficult of the examples. So right away I see that I have secant x over 1 minus secant x minus secant x over 1 plus secant x. So my original instinct to change to sines and cosines is going to be put on hold because I feel like that's going to make these fractions very messy looking. So instead, I'm going to start by trying to get a common denominator. So I noticed that they, I could get a least common denominator by multiplying my current denominators together. So to get this to be my least common denominator, I'm going to have to go ahead and multiply top and bottom by 1 plus secant x. And over here, I'm going to have to multiply top and bottom by 1 minus secant x. Doing that on top, I'm going to have to distribute the secant x in. When I distribute that in, I get secant of x. That parenthesis looks weird. So secant of x times 1 plus secant of x times secant of x. So secant squared x all over. I notice on the bottom 
that this here, this least common denominator, is in the form a plus b times a minus b, which I know foils to be a squared minus b squared. So I'm going to have 1 squared minus secant squared x. And for my second fraction, again, I'm going to have to distribute. And I'll have secant of x minus secant squared x all over, again, a plus b, a minus b, so a squared minus b squared. Now that I have a common denominator, I can put these together. One thing I want to be careful of is that this is subtracting. So when I put these together, I am subtracting this entire function. So this minus sign is going to have to distribute to both of my terms. And I'm going to have secant of x plus secant squared x minus secant of x plus secant squared x all over 1 minus secant squared x. So you may at first be saying, why does that help me? But upon further examination, I see that my secant x's drop out here, and I now have two of these. So combining like terms, I get 2 secant squared x all over 1 minus secant squared x. So then I see, even looking even more closely, that this is a 1 and a trig function squared. So I'm going to go to my list of Pythagorean identities, and when I do, I see that I have this identity here, tangent squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. So could I get this in a form like this? Well, I could try subtracting secant squared from both sides. and then subtracting tangent squared, I get 1 minus secant squared x, my expression that's occurring in my denominator, equals a negative tangent squared x. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this function as 2 secant squared x all over negative tangent squared x. Well now, I know that secant squared is 1 over cosine squared, and tangent squared is sine over squared over cosine squared. So I'm wondering if I now rewrite these in terms of sines and cosines, if I can't get some things to cancel. So I'm going to say this is 2 times 1 over, so 2 over cosine squared x, all over negative sine squared x over cosine squared x which I see I have a fraction divided by a fraction, so that's taking that top fraction, 2 co over cosine squared x, and multiplying by the reciprocal of my bottom fraction, cosine squared x over negative sine squared x. Well, fortunately, my cosine squareds cancel because it's multiplying, giving me, and the negative I'm going to put on top, negative 2 over sine squared x, since 1 over sine squared x is cosecant squared x, I could also say this is negative 2 cosecant squared x. And there's going to be my simplest form. Again, much simpler than this expression I started with. So just to recap, sometimes it helps to write in terms of sine and cosine. Get a common denominator if you have fractions. Try to add or subtract. You do not need a common denominator for multiplying. We can just multiply straight across. Look for Pythagorean identities by looking at either having two trig functions being squared or a one and a trig function being squared with either addition or subtraction in between. And sometimes factoring and sometimes foiling will help you out as well. Again, no general set of rules. It's not ordered one through four. It's just some general tips of things you can try. And we will spend some time in class doing some examples together and looking at some of these as well.